Buenas tardes. Les agradezco a todos ustedes su presencia y quiero comenzar agradeciendo a el MDA por su inclusión ahora de México en esta eh, actividad tan importante. Los mexicanos nos sentimos muy honrados y muy agradecidos por ser parte de esta gran familia que ustedes han conformado. Eh, yo empecé mi trabajo como investigadora, como dramaturgista en 1998 y de esa primera experiencia surgió este libro donde es el recuento de lo que sucedió, las decisiones que se tomaron en un proceso de ensayos de un mes, y un mes nos dio para 701 páginas, eh, y ese es un primer eh, trabajo que this up in 700 páginas. This was our initial work. Very well now, over these last years, there has been intense work carried out in research and dramaturgy. And what I have to show you and tell you about today is two examples, two pieces of work that regard theater on the periphery that is not Mexico City it is not what is easily seen in point of fact it is theater that goes beyond its own borders and reaches the citizens this has something uh, to do with what we discussed yesterday I was talking about this need of understanding our audience our spectators understanding how they feel and uh, what their surroundings mean to them and based on that build in this case realities as i have called this work producing reality dissidence in theater and the policy of pain let me begin with a joke that will take us directly into the matter a german critic asked why do latin americans cry so much during their theater plays And a Mexican answers, and we don't understand why Europeans never cry when they look at our plays and watch what we do. This takes us directly into context, and thus I begin. I begin by denouncing or talking about the experience of my body in light of the symbolic and real occurrence in my country. I am a dramaturg that began working with the rehearsal process, but over time and in linkage with theatrical societies, I joined in as a bridge between creation and citizens um, and converted this not just into spectators, but stakeholders and actors for change. This transformation is justified because during the last two decades, I have dedicated my life to the study of dramaturgy as it is arising on the northern border of Mexico or the southern border of the United States. This led me to uh, travel in geography and in areas that were marked by economic asymmetry and by violence that opened up deep gashes in the peripheral territory. In my travels through Tijuana, Reynosa, Saltillo, Ciudad Juarez, Durango, Matamoros, Hermosillo, Tampico, and the city of Chihuahua, I found along the way not just dramaturgy, but various proposals for the stage that were rendering visible the exceptional situation that we were experiencing out of the ordinary in cities and in rural areas. I found signs of violence in both public and private spaces, wounds that were deep in the body of victims and that generated the need for a change through struggle and combat on the streets. Comienzo. And I begin. Theater for the end of the world. Dissidents stemming from the rubble. This is just a little bit of context behind me. The context of violence, some of what I have already narrated. And these are everyday scenes. In those places is where theater rises up 
but what kind of theater? That is the question it begs. Theater for the End of the World is in Tampico, Tamaulipas, 2008. And here are some of its uh, productions. And here we have Rupture that for years have been following uh, proposals of those who have not succumbed to apathy or fear. Expressions that have questioned the order of exclusion, taking up the public space and separating the strategy of control imposed by the use of violence on behalf of the government and criminal groups. Thus, we have rendered visible a set of scenic positions in order to gain spaces for expression. We might think of this as theater of the world, theater for the streets. In light of the silence of politicians and in their discourse that are aesthetically resolved, theater groups have taken up the spaces and highlighting the crises uh, uh, instituted by police and criminals alike. These theater groups have built other ways of carrying out politics through their presence and action. They have sought rendering visible the victims of a system and have presented analysis on the causes that lead to violence. In my role of social dramaturg, one of the major challenges that I face has been to build a discourse that will allow for conveying the complexity of this context and setting forth the bonds of communication between the creation for stage and citizenry. Even more to explain that what happens on the northern border of Mexico should concern all of us. Years ago, in Mexico City, migration and femicide, for example, were observed at a distance and were even thought of with disdain. Today, that mindset has changed substantially. The situation of violence in the northern border has been a benchmark to think of such painful cases as the disappearance of 43 students known as the students of Ayotzinapa, and I'm sure you are all aware of this tragedy. These were students that since 2014 have been missing. Their case is one of the saddest that we have ever experienced in the recent history of Mexico. Now, Theater for the End of the World is a collective group created in 2008 in the city of Tampico, Tamaulipas, one of the most dangerous areas of the country marked by the pre presence of drug trafficking mafias. And I uh, talk about this because this is part of what is inscribed in this territory. A reality that determines the reflection and production that results from it. But this is not limited just to uh, bridges between other realities, but rather creative proposals are the result of research processes in contexts such of violence such as Fukushima, Japan, Chernobyl, Cambodia, Vietnam, and more. The project Theater for the End of the World is defined as a program for intervention and scenic occupation in spaces that are in ruins, conditioned by violence and abandonment. The conditions of real risk drove the members to work with re uh, waste materials. And I am talking about an airplane and a submarine considered waste, as well as abandoned buildings that retain the seals of their other time splendid walls, but they are actually ruins. They are places filled with rubbish. These public rubbish sites located right in the heart of the city of Tampico are today being demolished with the intent of transforming them into to new building projects, possibly for money laundering purposes. 
However, what are the implications of the self-same collective deciding to work in these ruins and in this debris? In principle, we might think that theater for the end of the world had no other choice than to work with the remains of a city that had been destroyed, containing multiple spaces that were abandoned by inhabitants that fled from violence. However, this reality allowed the group to note that the ruins have a concentration of personal history and collective memory within the crumbling walls. For Walter Benjamin, it is the detritus where Benjamin locates the texture of the content of things. In the remains and the impurity, there is material for survival. Theater for the end of the world proposes radical displacement of the initial idea of waste toward detritus, both in the container as well as in the memory of it. The production of these works stem from detritus itself. The ma matter is literally one of survival. Working with this detritus has been the principle of rendering visible that which is hidden, exposing lives that are carried out in the folds of collapsed structures and walls as the only way of surviving in a world that has been sold over to the logic of capitalism. Going from waste to becoming detritus is placing our bets on a work that demands that the body and resistance will not admit any kind of posturing. In this uh, regard, I think of the 10 tons of waste that the collective removed from a building that in the past had been the headquarters of an important newspaper, and then they turned it into a cultural center. Notwithstanding this, the adverse circumstances in which theater for the end of the world creates its project is more alive than ever before. And with the desire of moving beyond theater, going straight to the heart of the social environment where they are well received because of their courageous work and because they open up a space for dialogue and dialogue and exchange of feelings and emotion. Here we see some of the aesthetics of theater for the end of the world. And these are the places where we work because there is research work in these contexts of violence. And as you can see, it is always ruins. It is always on the periphery. And specifically in Tampico, they're working in an area called Isleta Perez. It's been abandoned for several decades now, and that is the place where we were able to found cultural spaces. This is the most recent project and is related to debris or detritus. Here is the airplane that I mentioned earlier. And I'll move on to the next example. Es a partir de esta instalación de la que les voy a hablar que hicieron varios artistas escénicos y visuales que se llama Cruz de Clavos y que es un monumento que se hizo eh, en conmemoración de los feminicidios. Está, hay dos cruces, una en Ciudad Juárez y otra en Chihuahua, la, de la que hablo, la que está en Chihuahua, es esta que ustedes están viendo. En los últimos años hemos visto que la furia ciudadana en diversos países ha derribado monumentos erigidos en honor de esclavistas y genocidas. A estas acciones se les ha calificado como actos que destruyen la historia. A contrapelo de esta perspectiva, Enzo Traverso señala, estas acciones están obligando a revisar más de cerca a quienes son honrados por estos monumentos y esto permite que la historia se vuelva a contar ahora desde el punto de vista de las víctimas. 
En efecto, esta destrucción no es irreflexiva. Implica la irrupción en el espacio público de un estado de injusticia y sucesivas violencias naturalizadas por décadas e incluso por siglos. Si bien no es una escritura que se encuentra en la superficie, the writing that you find in the surface, it is a, there in a Latin state and under certain circumstances, it explodes in acts of defiance. And as Traverso said, the theory that is currently extended throughout the cities and the world scale reclaims, like their forefathers would demand, new tolerance rules and coexistence rules. And in this sense, I believe that we can share the examples of the manifestations that we had on George Floyd not so long ago in the United States. On the surface of these monuments, we see writing that honors the hero, but underneath we see the strata of those who actually forged the steel, worked and labored the stone, and were victims of the violence that was forged upon the heroic nature of the immortalized characters, an open opposition to the tenderness of history. The ins this installation, uh, Needle of uh, Cross of Needles, it is now a concept that, that is institutionalized. The cross is a mark that was given to the citizenship that is urban, that organizing the uh, social participation at the end of it, 2001, a group of family members of the feminist side, lawyers, citizens, artists, and uh, of the scene and the feminist group called Ocho de Marzo were supported by workers of the steel industry in Chihuahua, installed two great format crosses in front of the government hall in the capital of the state, in the Plaza Hidalgo, and the second one in the border cross of Santa Fe in Ciudad Juarez. These crosses were built with two um, uh, tended uh, ways for trains and over a metallic plaque. The simple enunciation of the means of transportation makes us think of a train as a symbol of progress. And now we look at it in a critical fashion in, in its multiple flaws and that, for instance, in the context of the city of Chihuahua, social injustice and a strong patriarchal structure, the women became victims of femicide violence. The sinister landscape that was uh, painted by the bodies of women that were murdered and thrown to the streets in the 90s triggered all manner of protest, protestation that throughout the years had a founding moment in the installation of the Cross of Needles. The cross is a container of life and death of hundreds of poor women who were working in sweatshops, who were students, who were homemakers and migrants and little girls that became the victims of a civilizing process that has um, episodes of violence for those who struggle for survival. The dispute for space is asymmetrical in nature. On one side, we have the golden standard of history, and yet in the other side, a narrative of abuse and barbaric methods that don't cease even with death because they inflict the violence in the dead bodies of women. And the key of the cross of needles that was there between uh, the monuments of the government hall and that of the father of the land, Miguel Hidalgo Costilla, set a space in which the representation of women has been excluded without any type of questioning. However, the cross is far from representing the voice and idealized image of women. On the, uh, quite the contrary, what it installs is a presence and the voice that has yet to be heard of the reclamations of their family members and the citizenship at large. With this cross of needles, we interrupt the legit political legitimacy in this space to saw a true 
claim for justice to inaugurate the presence of a, an organized uh, citizenry at a square that is usually not that because it was covered by trees precisely to avoid the presence of the citizens of the citizens the cross throughout the years has become a space of uh, protestation for the citizens. The operation is significant because it implies the liberation of the past from, a, from institutional control. Concretely speaking, and through Traverso's words, we believe that the writing of history, more than being an intellectual task, is also a labor that, require, that requires a collective effort. And in this sense, the effort of the dramaturgs at large, which in this case, I would call them social agents. The cross of uh, needles is now a space of the city. It is open to the incorporation of other narratives and has given ex sad examples like those of the cruel killings of other women in recent history, which have been a matter of scandal. In this uh, cross of needles, this is uh, the square I was talking to you about, and this monument uh, represents Miguel Hidalgo. This is the government hall, the city hall, and this is where you see the cross as an installation. This is the presence of the cross of nails and how the citizens have participated actively in these activities. What has been built upon to show this uh, social need, the activities that are being uh, realized here. For the instance, in this image, you can see how we are referencing a performance that happened in the 60s in Brazil, which was called The Divider. And what they did in this case was to show that we were not just an individual body, but we would speak of an actual social body. And in Rio de Janeiro, they took a, a long piece of clo clo cloth and people dressed themselves up with it. And this type of performance we brought to Ciudad Juarez and at the time, we created this social body, which in this case was not was not dressed in white because it should be dressed in black as a form of mourning. And this is uh, just a ways in which the artists uh, make representations. It is an open space for everybody to truly feel that they can reconfigure their history and put in place whatever they might feel is appropriate in order to demand justice in the end. The assessment that comes from this social dramaturgy is that these are spaces in which put visibility to pain. And in this sense, Cristina Rivera Garza points out that pain not, does not only destroy, but it also produces a reality. And this is where its social languages become languages of politics. And from this perspective, the pain has a capability to build uh, communities and to create alliances against the inaction of the state. And it implies the outcry, the fury, and the social movement and organization. I think of the movement of the women of the Plaza de Mayo in Argentina, of the mothers and fathers of the uh, people killed in Ayotzinapa, of the mothers who are tracking their children throughout Mexico in mountain and uh, desert alike. They are armed with simple weaponry just to even um, dig up whether any indication of a uh, clandestine ossuary. And this uh, form of manifestation are, is all part of this body that is articulated through pain, which is no longer uh, translated into actual crying, but into political mobility. And uh, this performance that we saw that was very strong, that was seen in Chile, which you have seen, 
this manifestations in which it called the rapist, you are the rapist. That's what they call. They, they are a form of theatricality and performance in order to put everything into the public eye. Ileana Dieguez, as following Elvina Das, pointed out the problem of pain as an experience of approximation to create new capable, new relationships that are capable of redignifying the communities. And we ask ourselves, what is it that we try to free ourselves of when we don't want to think of the relationship between our pain and that of others? Why should we question those who made their pain the stage of encounter with the pain of others and began processes of profoundly moving struggles that are inclusive? I respond that indifference can have that aspect of fear and of otherness. And in others, they believe that they are safe because that wouldn't happen in my context. However, it is now part of us. It includes our past, the past of our mothers and grandmothers. They're all part of a profound strata of society that were tapped by violence. As we say in Mexico, if they touch just one, we all respond to that. The painful body responds and organizes itself and becomes in a position of action. I'm going to skip a few parts because I would be interested in having or engaging in dialogue from what I have uh, talked about. Judy Butler studied who appears in public stages, and she points out that the power determines who can appear truly in public space. But amongst the people who are selected and those who are not selected, you would have to establish alliances. If we were to take things literally, these instructions literally would understand those who would feel their injustice and damage actually reach this cross of nails. And once we have exposed part of the work that I have realized for, uh, for the past few years, I would want to conclude that my commitment to dramaturgy, to the support of the stage arts, has become more intense because thanks to theater and performance arts, I can truly say that this land has been integrated by many Mexicos that I have known throughout my work as a researcher in the field. And always from the perspective of theater in mind, I consider that the work of a dramaturg only has limit sets set of limits that you establish to yourself. I become a bridge between scenic productions and a society that looks for better life conditions in spite of the economic disasters, political disasters, and everything that comes from the pandemic. The performance arts and the theater are, from my perspective, a tool, a fundamental tool to communicate not um, at the level of ideas, but also at the level of emotions and feelings. And from this vision, our work is important to society in these uh, trying times. Thank you for your attention. And I want to thank my interpreters, who I'm sure made the best out of this situation. Thank you. I don't know if uh, we still have some time. Should you want uh, to share something with me? Anything, any comments that you would like to add to this conversation from, from what we talked about in this presentation? Thank you, Rocio. I did. We didn't really want you to skip anything because everything we just heard was so 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 amazing, and so I really can't think of a specific question. However, what I'm interested in is all everything that it comes to the admiration of your work. I believe that it stems directly from from what I've detected. That is, when we talked about theater in Mexico will always focus in many parts in Mexico City, right? So you usually leave on the wayside a lot of activity that happens elsewhere that actually impacts the way in which we can offer in an artistic manner to the world. So my question is, do you believe this is also changing? I know 
that you've brought about visibility to other um, spaces outside of Mexico City. So have you seen an evolution in the way in which we pay attention to what is happening outside of the city. Yes, I do believe it is changing. As I said in the uh, essay that I just read, a few years ago, these topics were despised because they didn't really understand it. Now that I've seen violence, even in Mexico City, people can now begin to understand. And a piece of information that was impressive to me is that colleagues from other countries uh, do research on Mexico and they're interested in these uh, topics. Why? Because these are the ones that are particular to Mexico. This is not a narrative that is completely um, removed. This is, uh, I was fearful of how these topics would be received because they're very tough to talk about, but I always try to open up the space in order to bring about the peripheral ideas that are happening. Usually we need to make an, uh, to engage in an exercise of self-criticism, which is what I learned in school. Now I'm happy to see that these exercises are happening in different perspectives, with different uh, depths, with different contexts. There was a play, and I wouldn't even call it an actual play, but it was a, a, a performance piece because sometimes it's dif difficult to actually classify whether it is just theater, a performance, or a living art. I would say that it was just a stage performance in which you had an actress that would put herself at the center of the stage. She would get naked and she would narrate her a story of violence and she, and she would look in the audience for somebody and ask them, would you be capable of uh, giving me your clothes or would you rather not do that? I don't exactly remember the question, but it was something like that. The case is that the people actually were startled and they didn't really know what to do. And at some point, somebody had the initiative and said, I would rather give you my clothes. So he went to the stage and they disrobed and gave uh, their clothes to the actress. And then the actress wore the clothes of that person, but there was yet another person who was naked. So uh, she looked for another person and asked, would you be able to disrobe and give them their clothes or would you like not to do it? And there were people who would say no. And then you would see a cascade of people saying yes. And then she would have 20 people on the stage who were um, wrongly dressed because a woman would give their uh, clothes to a man and a man to a woman, or maybe a very big person would give their clothes to a small person. And then you would have ill-fitting clothes on you. And this uh, performance truly impacted me because it made me look through the eyes of this, of how these histories are shared, are a shared space. And I saw this as a, as, as part of the audience for five, five times and I was their, their main promoter. We actually even took this performance to Colombia and I always asked myself as part of the audience, if I were to be chosen, what history of violence I would talk about? Because it is easy to talk about the others and the violence that you see from the outside. I even fall victim of this situation when I am a dramaturg, but now when I can share my own uh, violence, I can see uh, something that was different, something I had to do with a, a violence with my gender, violence with my ethnicity, my race, a violence against my way of thinking even, and multiple types of violence, not necessarily a violence that had to do directly with an armed state or maybe not belonging to certain living conditions for me, fortunately, but I can see them with the eyes of others and consider myself sensitive enough to understand them. That brought about some form of transform transformation, a way of crossing these borders. And this is why I think of uh, crossing the borders. My late motif of these, uh, of the, my work since 1998, up until today has been crossing borders. I am always trying to think of borders not as a limit, but as, a, as would Heidegger would call them, as the place in which something begins to happen. And in this sense, I have thought for many years the of the Mexican and United States border. Thank you for your question. I don't know if anybody else would like to participate.
Any other comments, no takers? Sorry, I can't, I can't see. Let me tell you, ma'am. For me, it was quite intriguing to see this moment in which we, you talked about the social dramaturg and in these moments in which we continue to define who we are as professionals, especially in Mexico. It is quite exciting to see that we are taking the next step uh, and uh, that we are seeing uh, new ways in which we can specialize ourselves in different hues to this to this career of ours, maybe more uh, specific objectives, and this will be an excellent opportunity to create or elaborate further even. I don't know if you have uh, included these musings into your thoughts, these uh, possibilities, and you would like to elaborate on them. That is not the case. Actually, in this uh, journey of mine, I like to think of it from different examples that I that happen in different disciplines, you know, thinking of your own journey, thinking that maybe we make mistakes, that sometimes we find uh, an unexpected form of exploration and these are the most interesting aspects of my career and working with this type of theater i had to reach the new contexts how would i speak of something i don't really know much about so i had to do a, a trip throughout the entirety of the border and getting to know these contexts is because i i was not knowledgeable of the history of the people of, of the apache people of drug trafficking of uh, femicides and involving myself in this universe made me look through the visor of theater through the visor of uh, through this uh, crosshairs that I have incorporated of the performance arts and include myself or embed myself in the social stage, which is something that sociologists call like that and have this new outlook through this new visor, through this new point of view. And that became a passion to me because I believe that this is a way in which we can not only uh, go uh, far from the limits of so so sociology, but we support ourselves in different forms of study because they become something else. And uh, with the use of a team who are my research team, Cuerpos Fronteras y Violencias, and another research team called Teatro de Fronteras, we think of these spaces because theater in itself in Mexico has uh, advanced a lot and has actually gone beyond the borders. And in the sense, starting from this particular line of work, I think of myself as a professional and I, t and I tell myself, now I am more in the field of uh, the social uh, sciences, but I don't want to abandon my starting point, which is theater. My starting point, which is the stage, which is the body, that is understanding the experiences that are out there and transmitting them or translating them through that through my body. When I see these topics, they actually hurt me. And because I actually skipped a few parts, that's because it was so painful to me. I touch upon these parts of my heart and they reveal aspects of the human condition that few times are uh, dealt with that are usually not very visible because they tend to be very painful. And from these places, why should I touch upon fear? And from that, I need to understand that pain and see and create a sensitivity with the uh, public. I believe that now is a case to bring about a, con a new concept into this social dramaturgy, because when we speak about um, curating our work, you know, we do the curating of, um, say, this event, and we talk about theater, well, I say we're just going to do the dramaturgy of an event. We don't need to borrow terms from other disciplines if we ourselves have our own terminology. So 
this uh, addendum of social aspect would complement our dramaturgy and we think we must think of it out there and on the streets and understand how it can come back to us because we might think that it just stays in the outside and, and it will never come back it comes back because we know after we do after we do all these explorations what the people feel and think and how the plays that happen in this context create a form of dialogue and exchange of conversations in which even people tell us you should you should maybe stage a play on the life of, say, El Chapo Guzman, or maybe uh, a stage, a play on this very recent piece of history. And when I see that these plays actually touch upon the feelings of people, it, we wouldn't even have to worry about the audience. The, the audience themselves go and tell others about the place, and they go to the theaters. It's a way in which we do things. I don't deny other possibilities and how they could happen. This is just another way of doing things and it is not the all-encompassive cure-all for everything it just brings about something from the peripheral uh, lands if you will and puts it at the center if somebody is interested in it that's okay and if not there are other types of theater efforts that we can work in later on as well thank you for your uh, question veronica i believe that's all for you i think we're done Yes, 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 I want to ask you something. You opened up, well, I had heard of this topic before. I, I had heard of the theater for the end of the world, but, but you opened up my uh, eyes to the other part of the border, the other border that we have in Chiapas in the southern regions of Mexico, which has a, a influx of immigration that is incredible, comparable to countries like those located in, in Africa or even in China. So it brought, brings about a lot of tension that we need to think about is specifically in this space. So thank you for uh, that motivation to study about um, this border that we have in the southern regions. And that's all. Thank you. Of course, if somebody took uh, the mantle for their southern border, I would be so happy. I've worked on the northern border and I have yet any time to go there to the south or you see that there are uh, cases of violence and other types of dynamics and histories that I don't really know about. But if you would take the mantle for that, then I would help you with my experience. And I can tell you that it is indeed fascinating because when I did my dramaturgy on what was uh, my object of study, and I wanted to, my object of study to be uh, going to these contexts, to work, like in the case of Kosovo, re researching how this uh, dramaturgy would translate into other spaces, into other contexts, and how it would adapt and how it is well received. And this is a type of work that I believe is fascinating and would I would need to be done. If you were to do that, I, of course, would help you in whatever experience I might add to that, because we need a lot more people actually doing this type of work. So once more, I want to thank you for your attention.